First, we're going to discuss the notion of the city of Stockholm and why it's such a good place. And, and here I have with me today, Karin Mentimek, who heads up everything that has to do with visiting Stockholm. Yeah. And, and mind you, I mean, like, you can visit Stockholm for so many reasons, right? Absolutely. There are numbers of reasons. And food is one of them, of course. Uh, I thought that was the only reason, basically, for visiting Stockholm, but... It's a very important reason. I think uh, the whole uh, th thing about our lifestyle, our unique lifestyle here in Stockholm, which is very uh, close to nature, but still in an urban setting, um, together with uh, the awareness of sustainability and health, uh, is something that a lot of people are very curious about. And that also makes them to come here um, and, and experience our city themselves. Because you don't come here for the meals anymore. I mean, like you come here for, well, you have a dinner at a really good restaurant, then you go out and you pick berries in the forest and... Uh, yeah, I mean, the meal is one thing, but I think it's the whole uh, thing around it. Uh, they want to know where it's from, how it's produced. Um, they, they are aware of um, how, what it makes um, with the body. Um, and, and they are aware of the whole innovation, creativity that goes on in Stockholm. That whole package is, is what makes the, the, the place attractive. Oh, that's cool. And, and of course, it's not just about creating, you know, temporary visits to Stockholm. Perhaps we can create some permanent visitors, people who think it's so yeah, good and they stay. Yeah. No, I mean, it starts, maybe it starts uh, with a, a visit uh, as a tourist or coming here for business. And that makes you... Uh, more curious about the city and to, to learn more about what's going on here. And, and uh, hopefully um, you want to stay as well. Oh, wonderful. So, Karin, what would you say are the top arguments for, for coming, visiting, and then staying in Stockholm permanently? I think it's uh, a lot to do with the lifestyle and, and the balance uh, of life uh, we uh, have here in Stockholm. And also... Um, about the, that healthy lifestyle we have. I think that's, that sort of really sums it up a lot because that's got to do with food. It's, it's the way you have the balance in life between uh, career and, and, uh, and uh, free time. Um, and Stockholm has it all uh, in a package. In a nice little package yes. with a, you know, this blue and yellow ribbon tied around it. Now mm -hmm. that's, that's very cool. So, but it's not just only you who are with me in this session. We also have... You know, speaking about good food, of course, you have to you know, speak to the Italians out there. And we have with us here today Giancarlo Riboldi as well, who is heading up um, Open Innovation at Barilla, uh, which, of course, is the mother of all good pasta out there. And uh, Giancarlo, you know, where are you based by, the, by you know, are, are you, you're in Italy, right? Because it's so hard to understand where people are these days. And... Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you perfectly. Great, great. Unfortunately, I can hear you very well, be disturbed the connection, but I will follow. I have been following the conversation. So first of all, thanks a lot for inviting me to this great event. I'm very proud of it. I'm based in Parma, in Italy, where the headquarters of Barilla Group is. And it will be really... Uh, interesting to talk about open innovation with you today. Now that, that's that's really cool, and, and it's kind of fun though because we have met several times in Stockholm, and of course Barilla are are present yeah. everywhere, right? So uh, and have had some some really interesting discussions around uh, the notion of being open and what that has to do with innovation, which also has a lot to do with Stockholm because it's it's a really open city. Mm -hmm. You have to comment on that too. Doesn't it even have a name in Stockholm? Well, we, we promote Stockholm being the open city. The open um, city, right? The open city. Yep. Uh, that welcomes everyone, no matter what, um, and that it's open to ideas. Um. New ideas and new innovation on a city yeah. scale. Okay. Yeah. But, but, but Giancarlo, what would you say about innovation? I mean, how, how are you conducting that at Barilla these days? Because we say a lot of bad things about the big food companies that they don't innovate well, and, uh, to be honest, most of them don't, uh, but you guys actually do. Could you tell us a bit more about that? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the innovation has been always part of, I would say, the Barilla uh, DNA, you know, because, uh, I mean, the, the innovation and our way of doing innovation has led the company to be the first company in the world for pasta, the first uh, in the sauce for in Europe, uh, and also playing a role of leader in Italy, France, uh, and Sweden as well in many uh, bakery categories. Or we just we just have to remind that Barilla is a pasta meat solution and bakery products. So, uh, we normally do our innovation uh, really stay close to our mission, which is good for you, good for the planet. And I think this is really potential and for a strong concept also in this discussion about sustainability, about good food, about lifestyle and education for people in eating uh, and especially in joy of eating and uh, having the joy also of the food. And uh, so that's to introduce you the fact that, uh, of course, innovation has been always at the base of our way of doing products and way of our uh, interact with the environment, which is really important for us. Uh, in fact, the good for the planet means really the respect and interaction with the planet. Anyhow, you are developing a new product to give to people. And today, I would say more than today, since some years, actually, we have been looking outside also our way of, uh, of doing innovation, our internal network. We have been looking outside to the, what was happening and what is happening today in the entrepreneurs' environment, in the startups and all the food makers and the innovators in the food and the agri -tech. And we believe that the competencies, the new technologies, and also the power, which is growing from the outside, cannot be let alone. So we need to definitely integrate this value into our way of doing innovation. And this is what actually the Open Innovation is doing uh, at Barilla. And uh, we are doing, and actually we are doing it uh, in a really concrete way, that through our uh, corporate venture arm, which is Blue 1877, actually it is really our way, a concrete way of interacting with uh, external ecosystem, with the startups, with entrepreneurs. And we do that really to create powerful collaboration in the uh, food and agri-tech uh, startup network, which are called, uh, like in our Good Food Makers program, which is really a call for startups, so an acceleration for startup uh, based on concrete needs and concrete projects from um, our people, from our internal team. And you can see, for instance, in the, in the edition of 2020, we have launched four calls for startups about kids snacking, about alternative channels, as well as traceability system and uh, very important uh, and awesome this context. They're regenerative. But 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 this is this is so cool. So, so you created basically, and you've been uh, you know running around with uh, at Perilla with with a whole, whole portfolio of open innovation initiatives out there. Which I think is is really really good. And but where do you get your ideas? I mean, like you spent a lot of time in Sweden. Did you see anything interesting here? We, we we see a really potential in Sweden and in the Nordics. We we really know very well. I mean, we have been uh, with the Baza brand uh, leading this market for uh, many years, and we know, uh, let's say, all the, all the audience. So you understand, Vasa bread is basically, if you're in the UK, it's the equivalent of Marmite. It's a national you know, golden egg of some sort. Uh, yeah, so we, we show sure. and, and that was picked up by a bunch of Italians. And of course, they run Vasa bed, bread better now than it used to be. So, so thank you for that, for preserving our heritage, Giancarlo. And um, <laughs> sorry, I, I was interrupting you when you were speaking about Vasa bread, because I think that's a really good example of, of where you... You know, you yeah, pushed yeah. it to a market. And, and you know, uh, the, the Vaza team is also involved in our good food makers. So in these open innovation activities, because we strongly believe that uh, the, 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 the Swedish lifestyle, the Swedish way of approaching food, the concept of food, or the Swedish concept of food is something that should be uh, as well promoted as uh, all the others, uh, I would say, different uh, uh, different projects and, and different attitudes. So we, 
we, we see a strong value and we have discussed with you, I remember, uh, different times also in the past about the value of uh, the, I would say, Swedish and Nordic ecosystem in uh, really food uh, innovation. Uh, and this is also the reason why it's very nice to be here talking to you today. Okay, so it's lovely. I mean, uh, and Karin, what would you say if someone came from, say, Italy to Stockholm in order to say, hey, this is a really good uh, food cluster you have here. You know, what, can we participate in, uh, in enhancing this further and perhaps take the innovations out to the rest of the world? And then you would say, no, because it's not Swedish. <laughs> No, you're laughing no. because you wouldn't, of course. No. It's a very leading question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so when, it comes to, when it comes to the city of Stockholm and, and when, when we pushed uh, the notion, because uh, Barilla actually stole the concept of good for you, good for the planet uh, from Sweden Food Tech, but we also have a third thing that's called tasting good, mm. and you did that already, so, so that might be, be forgiven from your part. But when you think about, uh, you know, good food city what is that i think it, it, it's i think about uh it, it's it's good food it's tasty food but it's also food that's good for both uh people and planet so it's the the whole uh the, the whole concept, thing around it the whole thing around yeah. it not just a meal that tastes good but it's it yes. should be good for you and the planet as well. yeah and also thinking it in urban in urban terms i exactly. think that's, that's very yeah. important yeah. too right where it's locally produced uh in an urban setting for instance yeah exactly so so this is all uh, all very interesting uh, i by the way i, I need to ask the tech joan uh, joan yeah can I, can I interrupt you? I mean, you, 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 you were mentioning something about stealing the, the good for you, good for the planet. Yeah, you know? yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we were first on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me react on that because we are really proud of uh, the double pyramid model promoted by our Barilla Center for Food and Nutrition, which is actually inspiring uh, uh, our mission, which is, by the way, as much as all we as organization, we use the same mission, I think we can all together bring benefit to people and to the planet. So very pleased that we are all aiming at that mission. So that's a good point. Okay, okay. perhaps it was, uh, well, I, I think great souls think alike. That must be the case, what, what, yeah. what is here, right? Um, so um, this is basically, you know, a fantastic conversation that we look forward to continue to have uh, with the city of Stockholm, our great friends and partners without whose help, uh, you know, we could never have managed to get where we are. And to some extent, it's actually without you even knowing, because it's all about the citizens of Stockholm being these people on the vanguard all the time. You know, health, sustainability, tech savviness, etc. Uh, so they are really the ones helping us to to capture this position here, and enabling us to hold this conference. And um, uh, we, we are actually now about to go into the various sessions of the afternoon. And I probably dragged out a little on time. I always do that, so I have to mend my ways and say, now you have to go to the session of your choice. And you have three to choose from. Uh, the future of retail, how do you buy things in the urban environment going forward, run by my friend and colleague Alex Kubavsko. Uh, or you can go to the session that is called uh, Growing Things in the City, uh, that is run by my dear friend Daniel Scaven Rubin, different session. Or you can stick around with me if you haven't tired yet uh, in a discussion around hospitality in urban environments. So choose which session you want to join and see you there soon.